Hey guys, here today with a unboxing and quick review of the Isheen Touch T100 charger. Um, I'm gonna call it a lipo charger because that's all I have. That's what I'm used to charging. It charges more than lipos. Uh, go ahead and let you guys look at the box. Uh, safety is important. Of course, uh, if you guys don't know anything about lipo charging, please read up. Educate yourself. Um, it can be dangerous. Please don't burn down your houses. Um, take appropriate precautions. And all that good stuff. Here you guys have the specs. If anyone wants to know. 100 watt charge power. 5 watt discharge. 1 to 6 cell. AC DC, which is what I'm looking for because I don't have a separate power supply or an extra car battery to use, so ACDC is the way to go for me. Anyways, let's get into the box. Here you have a little quality sticker. The manual. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys. It's not too bad of a manual. It's actually pretty decent. Um, it's pretty much all just pictures with minimal uh, wording. Basically showing the screens. Uh, it's not too bad of a manual. I've flipped through it already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and pull this out. Okay, here we have the unit itself. Touch T100. And uh, this is uh, like the soft touch plastic. Feels pretty good. Get a little string. Go ahead and put this off, read manual. We've read the manual. Um, go ahead and see if I can get this little. Of course, it's going. Of course, I'm going to be struggling right now. <laughs> Hold on, let me put peel this little sticker off. Okay, got the sticker off. Nice clean screen. Set that down. AC DC cord, or well, AC cord actually, uh, a Dean's to XT60 connector, it's very nice, charge cable, banana plugs to Dean's, and some alligator clips for using DC power sources, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this up and uh, come back. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this up and take a look at the menu and all the settings. Okay, let's see. Sorry about that. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot going on here, a lot of information here. Time, input, output, uh, AVE, I'm not really sure what that is. Gap, not really sure what that is. Um, I'm guessing this is the number of cells. Yeah, because that's four is four cells, maybe. Temperatures, amps, watts. Um, here you have memory for memory selection, uh, the type of battery. Um, this is the charge discharge cycle. So you get, uh, well, I'll go ahead and show you in a minute. Um, number of cells. This is charge current and discharge current. So I'm guessing and when you set it to balance charge, you can set, you know, a minimum, maximum for both when it's using both. Because I guess if you were just on the charge, you would only need charge cycle. And if you're just on the discharge, you only need discharge. So I'm guessing this setting is more for a balanced charge where it might do both. And the settings menu and start button. So let's go ahead and 
won't touch memory because I don't have anything set up, of course. Go ahead and touch that. There are your options, LiPo, Lilo, LiFe, PB, not really sure what PB is, NIMH, and NICD. Those are the types of batteries this charge can handle. Let's see here. We have storage charge, fast charge, balance charge, discharge, and regular charge without balance. And we have type of battery. So up to 6S. I'll be working with 4S, so go ahead and do that. Touch screen is pretty responsive, by the way. Uh, this is my first time using it, so it's actually pretty nice. Um, charge current. Now, this is a 100 watt charger. Um, so it can charge pretty fast. Of course, I'm not gonna put it all 100 watts into any of my batteries, but um, but when I'm using my parallel board, uh, that will come in handy. So let's see what what do we have here. So we got seven amp max. Looks like a one amp max on the discharge. So that's about normal. Um, settings. Here we have a bunch of settings. Um, LiPo check time. Um, I'm not really sure what this is. And the manual doesn't really clarify it or make it any better. Um, where was that? LiPo check time. Let me find it real quick. Okay, so battery check time. Lithium battery detection time settings. Um, I, mean, I guess it's a timeout for seeing what type of battery it is. Um, not sure why it'd even take 10 minutes, but uh, if you have some clarification on that, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not really too sure about that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Uh, NIMH and NICD, different settings for different batteries. Uh, waste time. I think they actually meant to put wait time, not waste, but uh, I'm not sure because I'm I think that's the cooldown between if you set it for multiple charge and discharge cycles, that's the time it's gonna wait in between to switch from charge to discharge. Um, so yeah, I think they meant to put wait time. Uh, input power, low cutoff. Um, just to make sure a little. Safety features, safety time, and sets the maximum time um, for a charge before it'll cut off. In case you have a battery that's just not balancing, it's not gonna try to balance it all day long. Uh, temperature cut off, if you have a temperature sensor, which this does accept, um, doesn't come in the box, but you can plug in a temperature sensor over here. Um, let's see, we got brightness, we're all the way up. Uh, key beep buzzer. Yep, keep all the beeps on. Capacity cutoff, never safety uh, feature. Yeah, leave that stock. And now we're back. So let me go ahead and uh, plug in the lipo here. So we can see what this graph does when we start charging. Because, like I said, I haven't used it yet. So it'll be my first time seeing it as well. So let's see here, lipo. Then we're gonna balance. Four S seven amp. No, I'm not, definitely not doing seven amp. These are my one point three graphenes. So probably do about. Nah, I usually charge it two S. So. And let's see, start. No, yeah, that's it. No holding the button. Once you press start, it starts going. So, I uh, hope you guys can see this. Let me zoom in a little more. Got a lot of nice information on the screen here. So, 
input output voltages um this one this is okay this is the average cell voltage right now okay so average cell voltage is 3.84 volts per cell right now um gap i'm not, still not sure maybe a, the difference between the highest and lowest cell mm, possibly and then you have the individual cell readout this is actually pretty nice i actually like this and you have a graph here showing um let me see i think the graph correlates to this information over here temperature 2.6 amps 40 watts and it's actually let you know what what watts you're using so you don't have to do that math calculation in your head and we have a total uh, milliamps put in so far so it's actually pretty nice so i'm actually gonna stop this to hook up my parallel charger and uh, push this up to pretty much to the max and see what it does so i'll be right back okay we're back here got my three graphings hooked up so i'm gonna be cranking this up right now um I'm going to go ahead and do a little test real quick, though, um, just to check the safety features. I'm going to put this to 3S, press start, and see if it recognizes that it's not a 3S. Yeah. Okay. Just want to check that. i got to check the safety features. So that's working. Um, let's go ahead and crank this up. And you can't hold this. I was tapping it before, but you can hold it. All the way up to seven amps. So that's the max for this. And let's go ahead and check it out. Let's see. See, do we actually get up to uh, seven amps? Since this is 100 watts. I haven't done the math to see what I should be getting up to. I just like to check and see. I'm sure most people don't really do the map like that. Okay, so we end up to 6.3 amps. Um, and I, like I said, that's a calculation of the cells, the number of cells, the voltage of the batteries, and whatnot, whatnot. As you can see, we're using 97 watts, 96, 97 watts. And that is. So you're hitting that max. You're not hitting the seven amp max, but you're hitting the 90, you know, well, almost 100 watt max. And it's nice to have that information because none of my other charges uh, have that. Um, so there we go. Of course, the graphs are a lot higher, a lot more voltage going in. Um, temperature is staying the same. Oh, you can turn on and off temperature. It's pretty nice. Um, I don't think you can change that from Celsius though. Now let's see. Everything looks to be functioning properly. Uh, we've got 142 milliamps in so far. Uh, so it functions pretty good. Now for uh, the price. Um, compared to other chargers, um, honestly, this is like a little on the premium side. Um, this is more watts than most other chargers, so of course you have that price to factor in. Um, but this touch screen is really nice. There's a lot of information on the screen, which uh, is very nice and a good feature. Go ahead, zoom out here. Um, I'll go ahead and show you my other chargers. Um, here I have imax b6ac plus v2 which was pretty much the top of the line ac charger when i got it and uh, my comments about that one is it's still a good charger that is a uh let me see here 50 watt max so imax 50 watts touch t100 100 watts so you got twice the charging power and this one, as you do, is that. And I believe the IMAX, I believe the IMAX is still around 50 bucks. So 
if you're saying double 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 the performance uh, for less than double the price then this is a good deal and we also have another new one pretty new one the Ishin D800 uh, of course the same family line this is a 80 watt charger 7 amp 80 watt um, so this is a step up actually from the IMAX um, but this price is roughly half of this one so you're really pay paying a premium for the screen and the fancy readouts and all that but the fancy readouts is good uh, information is good especially sorry about that especially with the batteries um, as far as value uh, I think if I was going to purchase one of these myself um, I would most likely get the D800 only because um of from a value point of view but if you're really into the hobby you always want more power and 100 watts is about as much as i've seen so far for an ac charger so this is about um as top of the line as you get as far as i know i may be wrong correct me if i'm wrong but uh yeah i think this is a a good charger it's built good it's performing good so far got to do some long run tests and I'll be using this a lot more um, but yeah seems to be working well I like having a watch read out I don't know why I'm just focusing on it but I like having that um, but yeah that's about it for this uh, unboxing and review if you have any questions please free feel free to comment um, I'll post a link to the product in the description and a also a link to the forum the RC Groups forum uh, for this product um, sorry about this being a long uh, review you know I like to be in depth as much as possible um, so I hope you guys enjoy goodbye right here you seen touch T100 thanks for watching see you next time